You have led your troops along desolate roads to face the invaders. Amassing in the fields before you is the enemy. Its units deploying into archers, mounted troops and spellcasters. You gallop along your own lines, rallying your men with cries of hope and superiority over those they will soon be fighting. You pray for the blessings of the immortals. But when the day is done, will you still be left with a kingdom? Hi, I'm Bekmi Berserker and welcome back to my channel. As more and more people get interested in Bekmi, what's clear from many comments I receive is just how much not having warfare and dominion play is seen as being a big gap in recent editions of the Dungeons & Dragons game. Indeed, many players of advanced Dungeons & Dragons didn't even know these rules existed in Beckme, and express regret at not having the opportunity to try them many years ago. So I thought it would be worth doing a short video on a key component of the Beckme game that supports warfare and dominion play, and that is the War Machine. The War Machine is a system that was written by Frank Mensa for the Companion Rules, released in 1984, and was included in the Amalgamated Rules Cyclopedia in 1991. The War Machine was a system for resolving mass combat, which the rules state could be with forces numbering anything from 10 each to any number. The point of this video is to go through this system to show you how the War Machine actually works, and I will be using three different types of forces to do this, all of whom will be involved in a battle at the end. These forces will be an elite group of 200 fighters, a group of 50 elven bandits, and an army of 1,000 undead led by an evil magic user. Okay, so let's get into it. The war machine is made up of four distinct steps. These are to calculate the basic force rating of the troops in question, to find the troop class, which ranges from untrained to elite, to calculate the basic rating of the troops, and to determine the combat results and apply them. Let's go through these step by step. The war machine refers to a group of troops as a force, and each force is assigned a basic force rating based on the quality of these troops. Once this basic force rating, or BFR, is known, the force will be assigned a troop class. We are told that to calculate the basic force rating, we must always determine the following factors. These are its leadership factor, experience factor, training factor, equipment factor, and if the force is comprised of elves, dwarves or powerful monsters, we must also include a special troop factor. Right, so let's work out the basic force rating of an elite troop of 200 fighters. I'm going to make a few assumptions about this particular force in order to help with comparisons later. This elite force is superbly funded and has access to the best weapons available. Due to being elite shock troops, they train the maximum number of weeks allowed and their leader is always present. So let's work out their basic force rating. But hang on, let's come up with a cool name for these guys. How about sticking with 80s tradition and going with the Knights of the Wild Stallions? The Knights of the Wild Stallions number 200 third level fighters who are heavy horsemen and led by Sir Rufus, a 15th level fighter under the joint rulership of the benevolent kings William and Edward. Remember, in Beckme, the fighter class is always human, so let's work out their leadership factor. To determine the force's leadership factor, we are told to add the leader's experience level to their intelligence, wisdom and charisma adjustments. We know that Rufus's level is 15, but you have to take my word for it that his intelligence is 13, giving him plus 1, his wisdom is 12, giving him no adjustment, and his charisma is 14, also giving him plus 1. Putting these together means a grand total of 15 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 17. In addition, we are told that plus 2 is gained for each 1% of the force that is name level, which in Beckme means 9th level and above. Well, Rufus is 1, but let's say two members of his force are 10th level, totaling 3 at name level. 3 is 1.5% of 200. However, the rules state that all calculations for the war machine are rounded up. Therefore, this 1.5 is rounded up to 2, and the leadership factor goes up by a total of plus 4, 2 for every 1%. 
Therefore, the total leadership factor for the Knights of the Wild Stallions is 21. We'll enter this onto this sheet here. Now for the experience factor. The rules state that a force must have one officer for every 40 troops. An officer is referred to as anyone helping the leader control the force. Naturally, you'd want these to be the higher level troops. Since the Knights of the Wild Stallions number 200, they require five officers. I will say that these are made up of the two 10th level fighters I mentioned earlier, plus three 7th level fighters. First, I must find the average level of the officers, not including the leader, and then multiply this by three. So this would be 10 plus 10 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 divided by 5 equals 8.2. 8.2 multiplied by 3 equals 24.6. Rounded up, this is 25. Second, I must determine the average level of the troops, not including the leader and the officers, and then multiply this number by 2. I've already stated that the Knights of the Wild Stallions are made up of third level fighters, so with no fluctuation, the average level is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Thirdly, the experience factor goes up by 1 for every victory the force has had, and down by 1 for every route it has experienced. We shall say that the Knights of the Wild Stallions are totally bodacious, and have 5 victories to their credit increasing their experience factor by 5. Therefore, the total experience factor is 25 plus 6 plus 5 equals 36. Let's go back to the BFR calculation and add that to the sheet. Now we come to the training factor, and this is where the reason I mentioned funding earlier becomes important. I mean, it's easy just to say that your force is constantly training, but in Beckme, that comes with a financial impact. Soldiers have to be paid, and these costs can quickly spiral. Cash is a great leveller in Beckme. For the purposes of this video, we just need to know that the training factor is plus one for every week trained, plus one for every week that is trained with their leader, and plus one for every month of the year the force is on duty. As this is a professional force, and this is just an example, I'm going to put all of these to the maximum. Therefore, the training factor for the Knights of the Wild Stallions is 20 plus 20 plus 12 equals 52. A well-oiled machine, but an extremely expensive one. We'll record the figure on the calculation sheet here. Next, we must determine the equipment factor, and this relates to the quality of the weapons being used and the armour being worn. Plus 5 is gained for average weapons, plus 10 for good weapons, and plus 15 is gained for excellent weapons. A further plus 5 is added if the troops are armed with a second weapon of the same quality, and a further plus 5 is gained if the force has an average armour class of 5 or better. Since the Knights of the Wild Stallions have only the best, we shall say that they are armed with excellent weapons, meaning plus 15 to their equipment factor. Also, the rules state that heavy horsemen are armed with a sword and a lance, and we shall say that these are also of equally excellent quality so an extra plus 5 is gained. In addition, the Knights of the Wild Stallions wear plate mail, so the plus 5 bonus for having an AC better than 5 is also gained. Therefore, their equipment factor is 15 plus 5 plus 5 equals 25. So, returning to calculating the basic force rating of the Knights of the Wild Stallions, since none of the troops are elves or dwarves or monsters with special characteristics, there is no special troop factor to add. Therefore, the basic force rating for the Knights of the Wild Stallions is 21 plus 36 plus 52 plus 25 equals 134. Now, if you remember, the next stage was to determine the troop class based on this BFR score. Checking this table, we can see that the Knights of the Wild Stallions are as elite as they say they are, so I'll record that here. The next step is to calculate the battle rating. To do this, we must first take the basic force rating and divide it by 10, rounding this number up as needed, and then use it as a bonus for each time one of these statements listed on the screen is true. So 134 divided by 10 equals 13.4. Therefore, rounded up, 
A bonus of 14 is gained for each time one of these statements is true. So let's apply this to the Knights of the Wild Stallions and see what we get. 20% of the force mounted? Check. 50% of the force mounted? Also check. None of the force is made up of archers or arbalists, so no bonuses are gained here. We will say that Sir Rufus and the five officers have magical weapons, so that's more than 1% and another check here. However, none of the force use spells, and no one in the army has the ability to fly. That said, being mounted, the movement of the force is above 100 feet per turn, so check for this one. So that's only four in total, and this is a really interesting point. So much can be won or lost on these aspects. For instance, if the force were elves, they would have gained two more bonuses for being spellcasters. As it is, the Knights of the Wild Stallions gain four times 14 in bonuses, equaling 56. This total of 56 is added to the basic force rating of 134 to make a battle rating of 190. With the battle rating determined, you are ready for war. There are a few more modifiers that can be made to each force's battle rating before combat, depending on the situation in that moment and the force being faced. These relate to the following. The troop ratio. Superiority in numbers can be significant. Morale, dependent on a number of factors like current location and situation. Environment, whether this is favourable or unfavourable. Terrain, for instance mounted troop in the woods are not as useful as in the open terrain. Immunities, for instance when magical weapons can only harm the enemy. And fatigue, usually resulting from a forced march or earlier battle. In addition, there are optional rules that may adjust the battle rating further, such as a successful ambush or stealing the enemy's plans. The most interesting of these though is the tactics table, as shown here. This is used just before the dice are thrown to determine the result of the battle. Each player elects to be either side A or side B, it doesn't matter which. They then choose a tactic based on the six shown here. The rules suggest you both do this by using a d6 and revealing the face of the number you chose to reveal your tactic. The results are then applied to the battle ratings or effects of the battle, potentially improving your chances or increasing your casualties. The tactics table is completely optional, but it does offer another spin on the system. Once all the battle rating modifiers have been applied, each player rolls a D percentile and adds their result to their battle rating. The one with the highest total wins, and the difference in the result determines the extent of victory and loss, as shown on this table, applying any further effects from the use of optional tactics if you've used them. We shall have a look at how this works later when I demonstrate a battle in action, but for now we have the Knights of the Wild Stallions, and they're ready to protect their most excellent realm at all costs. Let's turn aside from that elite outfit for a moment and meet Crow, a bandit elf lurking in the eaves of the deep wood. Crow has fallen on some bad times. After once being an adventurer of some standing and helping his friend, Hawk, avenge the death of his father, Crow got bored rather quickly of hanging around a convent and Hawk's unhealthy fascination with nuns. So the elf bade the human they farewell and left for the deep wood, gathering a good many fey folk with him to do quick raids into the neighbouring lands and back again. His life is dangerous, but he likes it and his elven comrades like that he doesn't tell them what to do much. So, what would the battle rating of Crow's comrades be? Don't worry, this should be a lot quicker now. Well, remember we must first determine the basic force rating by adding the leadership, experience, training, equipment, and special factors together. Well, Crow is a 5th level elf, leading a force of 50 level 1 bandits. So, let's do this. In terms of leadership factor, Crow's level is 5, and his intelligence is 16 for a bonus of 2, his wisdom is 13 for a bonus of 1, and his charisma is 12 for no bonus. None of his force are name level, making a leadership total of 8. For experience factor, we require 2 officers, one for every 40. However, Crow's comrades have no officers, so this is 0. The average level of the troops is 1, which is multiplied by 2 to make 2. 
Crow's comrades have had mixed success, so the victories and routes cancel themselves out. This makes an experience factor of just two. Turning to training factor, Crow's comrades do very little training, maybe three weeks a year at the most, but Crow is always there with them, so that helps. So that's plus one for every week trained, plus another plus one for every week Crow trains with them, making six. However, these guys are tough. They're always on the lookout for opportunities, or the long arm of the law. Therefore, I'm going to have them on duty every month of the year. I mean, what else have they got to do? Therefore, 6 plus 12 equals 18 for training factor. And when it comes to equipment factor, they just have the standard gear, although this consists of a sword and a longbow. They only wear leather armour though, but this makes them quicker. Therefore, the equipment factor is plus 5 for the average weapon, another plus 5 for a second weapon of the same quality, and 0 for the armour, as it is not better than AC5, making a grand total of 10. Because all of Crow's comrades are elves, they benefit from a special troop factor, which is a whopping plus 15. Adding all this up, we can work out that the basic force rating of Crow's comrades is 8 plus 2 plus 18 plus 10 plus 15, equaling 53. Checking the troop class table, this results in them being below average. So, what's their battle rating? Well, 53 divided by 10 is 5.3. Rounded up makes 6. So for every true result here, we get a bonus of plus 6. Well, none of the force are mounted, but 100% of the force has missile combat, and all with a range surpassing 100 feet. Crow has a longbow plus 1, so he accounts for 2% of the force with magical weapons, and 100% of the force can cast spells. Crow can cast Fly, which is 2% of the force, so this is true as well. Finally, Crow's comrades have a move of 120 feet per turn, so gain a bonus for speed also. Adding all this up, we can see that 7 bonuses were obtained. 7 times 6 is 42. Adding this to the basic force rating of 53 makes Crow's comrades' battle rating 95. Not bad. Crow's comrades are nothing to be sniffed at, and you can be sure that they'll remain as close to home ground as possible when facing off with the authorities. Okay, so let's do one more. Bargle the Infamous has left the ruins of Fort Doom following the fall of the Black Eagle Barony, but he seeks revenge. Now an evil 20th level magi user leading a zombie horde, which is marshalled by hideous wraith officers, Bargle seeks to destroy all in his path with his dark army. Perhaps the Knights of the Wild Stallions can stop him. So in determining the Dark Army's basic force rating and Bargle's intelligence, wisdom and charisma scores of 18, 13 and 9, their leadership factor is 20 plus 3 plus 1 plus 0 equaling 24. Although Bargle is name level, he does not account for 1% of the total force. As for experience factor, all the officers, if I can call them that, are 4 hit dice wraiths, and the rest of the troops are 2 hit dice zombies. 4 times 3 equals 12, and 2 times 2 equals 4. There have been no victories or routes at this point, so the experience factor total is 16. As for training, well, we can completely ignore that. For equipment factor, plus 5 will be gained for the average quality of the zombie weapons, no creatures are armed with a second weapon and the average armor class is worse than 5. Therefore, the equipment factor totals 5. Now for the special troop factor. The rules state that monsters listed with two or more asterisks next to their hit dice are special, and a plus 2 is gained for each 1% of a force that is special. The Dark Army requires 25 Wraith officers for its 1,000 troops. This is 2.5%. Remember, we are always rounding up in the war machine, so this becomes 3. This makes a total of 3 times 2 equals 6. Adding all of this together gives the Dark Army a basic force rating of 24 plus 16 plus 0 plus 5 plus 6 equals 51. A troop class of below average again. And for the purposes of determining their battle rating, their bonus is 6. Okay, so no troops are mounted, none use missile combat, 
over 1% but less than 20% have magical abilities, less than 5% can cast spells, but more than 1% can fly, these being the Wraiths and Bargle. However, the bulk of the force moves slower than 100 feet per turn, so this bonus is not gained. Therefore, with only two bonuses of plus six making 12, we add this to the basic force rating to obtain a battle rating of 51 plus 12 equaling 63. Very disappointing, but looks can be deceiving. Okay, so now we have the battle ratings for three very different forces. Let's go to war. Bargle's undead army appears over the rise in the landscape, although you could smell them long before they are in sight. Wave after wave of filth defiles the farmland between your wild stallions and the enemy, and on the wing of your line, enticing a small part of the horde to detach and stumble towards them, is Crow's comrades. Persuaded out of their forest by a royal pardon offered by the kings William and Edward, Crow figures those righteous dudes are gonna owe him big time. So, here we have it, the battle of the three armies. The rules state that there must be an equal number of forces to resolve the war machine, hence the need to detach some troops from the main force of zombies towards Crow's comrades. For the sake of this example, we will say that Crow has managed to keep this down to 100. Therefore, his 50 elves are facing 100 undead, and the 200 wild stallions are left facing the bulk of the force, 900. Let's address Crow's battle first. It's at this point that we make the final adjustments to each army's battle ratings, depending on the circumstances of engagement. I've put these circumstances on the screen for you to see. Remember, Crow's comrades had a battle rating of 95. They get no bonus for troop ratio, but they are in the dominion of their liege, and so gain plus 10. I wouldn't call the terrain completely favourable, as they are quite exposed, but they are higher than their opponent, having taken a hill, so gain another plus 20. Crow's comrades have no immunities to their enemy's attacks, and they are not fatigued. Therefore, their battle rating for this encounter is 95 plus 30 equals 125. We'll note that here. This detachment of the Dark Army is twice as large as the Elven Force, meaning they gain a troop ratio bonus of plus 30. There are no other modifiers until we get to immunities. Wraiths are only hit by magical or silver weapons, and only Crow is armed with one. This dark army detachment would require three wraiths to direct it, so it gains the plus 50 bonus for at least 1% of the force being immune to damage from the elves. The dark army do not suffer fatigue, meaning that their modified battle rating is 63 plus 30 plus 50 equals 143. All of a sudden, Crow's comrades look in trouble. For the sake of this example, I'm not going to use the tactics table, as this should be chosen by individual players. Sure, I could roll, but the results might not be sensible, so we'll just apply the difference to the roll straight to the results table. So here go the rolls. Let's do the Dark Army first. Ooh, 31. Adding this to the modified battle rating of 143 equals 174. Crow's comrades have a chance. Here it goes. Whoa, 98. Smashed it. 98 plus their battle rating of 125 is 223. Okay, so what does this mean? First, we must work out the difference between the two results. So 223 minus 174 equals 49. Looking at this on the results table gives us a magnificent result for Crow. Zero casualties. They are also not fatigued and hold the field. The Dark Army has 30% casualties and would be seriously fatigued if they felt such things. But they retreat to terrain units. In other words, they flee. Crow is victorious and his bandits rejoice with him in his victory. But suddenly, they stop their celebrations. The Wild Stallions have begun their charge. The battle is far from over. So now it's time for the 200 elite wild stallions to hold up their end of the bargain against the remaining 900 of the Dark Army. To their battle rating of 190, they gain no troop bonus, but they do receive a plus 10 bonus for being in the land of their liege. Also, their troop class is elite, which is more than two better than the Dark Army's, so another plus 10 bonus is gained. 
For environment, I'm going to allow the plus 25 for it being extremely favourable. They are mounted and charging infantry on flat farmland. It doesn't get any better than that. No other bonuses are relevant. Therefore, the Wild Stallions have a modified battle rating of 190 plus 45 equals 235. We'll record that here. Surely this is their day. But let's just check the remaining Dark Army. They outnumber the Stallions by 4.5 to 1. Remember, we round that up, so that's 5 to 1, meaning a huge bonus of plus 70. The next relevant modifier is Immunities, and with 22 Wraiths left in the battle, that's over 1% immune to most of their attacks. So that's another plus 50. This leaves a modified battle rating of 63 plus 120 equals 183. This ain't over yet. Time to roll some dice. Let's do the Dark Army first. 50. Oh well, I think it's all over for Bargel. That intelligence score of 18 really didn't do him any good this time around. 183 plus 50 equals 233. The Stallions have one already, but let's see the damage. The Wild Stallions roll... an 89. 235 plus 89 equals 324. Okay, a clear victory against the undead, but let's check the results. 324 minus 233 equals 91. Checking the results table, we can see that the Wild Stallions also amazingly do not suffer a single casualty, and are not fatigued, and may advance three terrain units if they wish to do so. What a day for everything that's good and right with the world. The Dark Army loses 30% of their force and routes, separating in several directions, probably to be picked off by local adventurers. Bargel is last seen teleporting from the area, and there is much rejoicing. And there you have it, a mass combat result generated by a simple system called the War Machine. And if you were wondering what was meant by the term terrain units when looking at the result, this is just an agreed unit of distance for your particular game, but generally it can be assumed as one mile. Well, the Wild Stallions return victorious, and Crow's comrades gain the pardons they were promised. That is until they can't resist the urge to rob people again, but for the moment, the citizens under the wise rule of Kings William and Edward are safe from the insidious plans of Bargle the Infamous, until of course they are threatened by another enemy. Could that be you? Well, I've really enjoyed putting together this video and explaining the War Machine system. If you also enjoyed it, then please consider buying me a coffee, link on the screen. Otherwise, why not try the War Machine in your game? I'm pretty sure it could translate across systems quite easily, so maybe try it in your 5e game, if that's what you play, and see how it goes. Whatever your experience of the system, it would be great to hear about it, so please comment and let everyone know. Otherwise, I'm Beck Me Berserker. keep making your saving throws, and I hope to see you back here soon.